Hi friends, uh, hope you are doing well. So in this lecture uh, of molecular biology, which is the fourth part in the series, uh, we will be discussing the genome complexity, focusing mainly on. So here we will discuss the structure of nucleosomes and uh, rest of the genome com complexity. I'm discussing mainly heterochromatin and uh, euchromatin. So as you already know from the previous lectures, we will just recapitulate what we know uh, up till now. We know that DNA exists in two uh, forms in the cell. In metaphase, uh, the DNA is compacted and condensed uh, as chromosome. And in interphase, uh, which is the functional state of a cell, it is uh, present as the chromatin, that is beads in string structure. And this chromatin in the functional state of a cell is associated with the uh, proteins called as histones, which help in packing uh, the DNA over themselves. So histones uh, are the part over which the DNA packages itself. And there are five types of histones, H2A, H2B, H3, H4, and H1. H2A, 2B, 3, and 4 make the core, central core over which the DNA winds itself. And as you can see in the diagram on the right hand side, you can see the central core over which the DNA is packaged. This you already know from the previous lecture as well. Uh, if you need to recapitulate, you have to see that lecture again. And uh, H1 is the part which links the two cores together. Uh, this is the part where it binds to the DNA, which is called as the linker DNA, and associates two uh, histones, two nucleosomes with each other, two cores with each other. And together, all these make nucleosomes. So we'll be focusing uh, the uh, light on the nucleosome in this uh, lecture. Recapitulation of the previous, uh, what we know so far about the histones, uh, you can see in the diagram that the H3 and H4 has the capability of making a dimer. Similarly, the H2 and H2B makes a dimer itself. Then these two dimers link themselves to form a tetramer. And these tetramers then combine to form a histone central octamer core over which the DNA winds itself. So this is the assembly which we know as the nucleosome. So the assembly of the octamer of histones over which the DNA winds itself is called as nucleosome. And it also contains the H1 here, which links the two nucleosomes with each other. So we know now what nucleosome consists of. We know it consists of a DNA uh, which is wound over the central core of histones. But how was it uh, discovered uh, in history in the molecular biology um, experimentation? What happened is that the chromatin was extracted and it was treated mildly with the help of a micrococal nucleus. Nucleases are the specific uh, enzymes which degrade the nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. When uh, chromatin extracted from the uh, eukaryotic cells were treated with the uh, micrococal nucleus mildly, what happened uh, is that uh, approximately 200 base pairs of uh, DNA fragments were produced. These DNA fragments were called as the mononucleosomes. And it was discovered that these 200 base pair uh, fragment was associated with the octamer core, which I already told you of the histones. This octamer is consists of two copies of each of H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. Uh, further down, it was also uh, discovered that this 200 base pair uh, fragment of a DNA, which is associated with the octamer, is also uh, consisting of the H1 one molecule of H1 histone as well with itself. As you can see in the diagram here, this is the part what we are referring as. This is called as the mononucleosome and uh, you can see that DNA is associated with the core particle. 
the same experiment was uh, repeated with the help of uh, the same enzyme but here uh, the digestion was prolonged and because of this digestion it was seen that the h1 part of the nucleosome gets digested during the prolonged digestion and this leads to the loss of h1 histone from the nucleosome mononucleosome particle and what results is the 146 base pair of the DNA with histone octomer, which is tightly uh, associated with it. This 146 base pair uh, of DNA is called as nucleosome core. So nucleosome core consists of uh, eight subunits of the histone together with the 146 base pair of DNA associated with it without the H1 histone. Later on, it was referred to as chromatosome. The chromatosome which is the nucleosome plus H1 histone. So what is a nucleosome? How it is packing, packing the DNA in itself? The histone octomer is usually forming a wedge-shaped disc. The wedge-shaped disc allows the DNA to wrap around itself about 1.8 turns. So there are no complete two turns of the DNA which bonds uh, itself over the uh, histone octomer. Then what happens is that the two histones have to bind to each other or link to each other. This linking help uh, happens with the help of a small fragment of a DNA. You remember from the nucleosome that was 200 base pair. So this uh, small linker DNA joins the one nucleosome with the another nucleosome. And this uh, linker DNA is then stabilized by the help of an H1, uh, which binds to this nucleosome to stabilize the point at which the DNA enters and the DNA leaves the nucleosome core. So joining the two nucleosome cores with each other. This presence uh, further uh, protects the 200 base pair of DNA. So making it around 166 base pair of DNA. Uh, which corresponds to full two turns around the histone octomer. So in the wedge, when it is only wedge shaped and when it is contained only an octomer, DNA can wrap around 146 base pairs of it and making only 1.8 turns. But then when H1 associates with the nucleosome, it further protects the 20, making it 166. What happens to the rest of the 200 base pair uh, is not known up till now. But uh, a single mononucleosome, when uh, treated with the mildly with the nucleus, uh, reveals a fragments of 200 base pairs, which you should always remember. So the core particles, which I already told you, the two core particles, the two nucleosomal cores, which contain the uh, histone octomer together with the DNA, are linked with the small fragment of a DNA that is called as linker DNA. Here in the diagram, you can see it here. Uh, the linker DNA, uh, which uh, is stabilized further down by the H1 histone particle. So this is the whole assembly of a nucleosome, which is functional in the interface um, state of a cell. As you can see in the diagram as well from the right hand side, you will see the octomer core is present in the um, middle and around which there is a 1.8 turns of a DNA and this is the linker DNA which leaves and which enters the uh, each nucleosome core and it is stabilized by the another histone which is not a part of core uh, assembly but is a part of a chromatosome and this uh, whole assembly has a uh, length and breadth of 110 angstroms into 55 angstroms. So this visualization uh, gives you the another perspective of the essence of the nucleosome model of uh, chromatin uh, in the interface state. Uh, as you can see in the diagram, there is a nucleosome over which the DNA is bound around 1.8 turns, uh, which protects it uh, about 146 base pairs of DNA. And then there is a histone which uh, protects the linker DNA uh, in between the two nucleosome uh, cores. Then after the nucleosome, uh, this is not the only uh, part which can wind the DNA and compact it. Uh, 
uh, further there occurs a much more um, compaction into 10 nanometers uh, then to 30 nanometers then to solenoid form and eventually which can further pack into chromosome in itself so there are various levels of compaction of dna over the proteins uh, till it reaches the highest compaction and condensation which is called as chromosome uh, the most important thing which we have just covered was the uh, compaction of the dna into the nucleosome with the help of an histones there are other levels of compactions as well uh, which i think uh, is the, too much uh, to cover in this lecture <clears throat> so what happens is that they usually uh, the uh, dna when it winds to the nucleosome it can have the open state from the closed state it can go to open state and metabolize go under replication transcription and so on and then it can be either in the dyad form also then again the closed form it depends upon whether the what state um, the cell is whether it is uh, needing the particular structures for the replication transcription or not so this is the another level of uh, compaction in which the nucleosomes are then packed together each nucleosome is packed at a one level to form a rosette shape of th uh, 30 nanometers which then uh, further packs uh, the dna into a higher degree of uh, condensation which i already uh, told you so these are the levels of compaction which a dna undergoes uh, in a stepwise manner from the chromatin structure bead in a uh, string structure to a complete uh, chromosome uh, condensation you can see uh, as you move from down to up you will see that the compaction uh, goes from the uh, double stranded dna to then bead in a structure then to a rosette shape structure then to one loop structure then to solenoid and coil structure and finally it will compact as chromosome so chromatin compaction uh, actually results into two degrees of or two different uh, varieties of the dna or uh, two different types of a dna one is called as heterochromatin another is called as euchromatin what is the difference between the two is that the uh, euchromatin is usually comprised of 30 nanometer uh, fibers and usually present in the nucleoplasm why it is present in the nucleoplasm because it's a region of active genes so when a cell has to actively metabolize and do the transcription and translation then the genome gets modified into the euchromatin or i can say that the genes get unwinded up to a degree of 30 nanometer fibers and remain in the nucleoplasm most of the time so that they are actively metabolized actively transcribed and translated so this is the region euchromatin can be called as the region of the active gene uh, within the chromatin structure however if uh, the genes are not needed they will be highly condensed into a higher chromatin order uh, and they are were located usually near the nuclear periphery at the at the border ends of the nucleus not in the nucleoplasm as uh, euchromatin wire so the heterochromatin can be called as the inactive genes or the genes which are transcriptionally repressed for for these genes we don't need an expression uh, during the functional state of a cell and then depending upon uh, whether they will be completely transcriptionally uh, repressed or not then it can be categorized as the constitutive or facultative but the main difference is the activity of a gene itself if the genes are active uh, and in a functional state they are needed uh, much quickly much avidly uh, and their uh, proteins are uh, doing the metabolic function then they most probably will be the euchromatin and if not then most probably they will be a heterochromatin this is the general concept of the chromatin compaction you can see in the diagram as well what is the difference between uh, the two the heterochromatin are usually having in histones which are deacetylated and the heterochromatin is also characterized by the methylation of the cpg islands within the dna so the dna which is present in the heterochromatin will be usually in the methylated form at the cpg islands 
CPG islands will be methylated for this DNA. However, in the euchromatin, the DNA will have an uh, acetones which are acetylated and they will have a um, DNA which is not methylated at all. So euchromatin active uh, genes present within the nucleoplasm has the histones which are acetylated and fourth one the transcription is active and hence the DNA is not methylated at CPG island. So this is the difference between the heterochromatin and a euchromatin. I hope it is clear. So we come to the conclusion of this uh, video. Uh, in the next video, I will be discussing the DNA code analysis, uh, which uh, encompasses the idea of um, reassociation kinetics. Uh, I will be uploading it soon. Till then, see you. And I hope uh, you like the contents of the uh, videos and uh, they are beneficial to you. And if you feel that uh, uh, they are good enough for you, you can order the book from the Amazon from which I have made these videos. Uh, it is available in the Amazon in both print and Kindle format. And do subscribe to my channel. You know where to subscribe. See you then.